Okay, so welcome. Hopefully whoever wanted to connect live is now live and people can then find the YouTube video later on as I'm recording this. So as I said last week, today we're working with hips, her, uh, specifically hip opening. So we'll be working a bit with uh, all the hip mobility that you will need for lotus pose if you're into that. But in general, we want to have healthy hips. We want to keep our range of motion with our hips so that we grow old, but we don't lose all that mobility, that elasticity, and that health in all of our joints. So we will start as every Tuesday for our power vinyasa class, our strong class, at the front of our mat. We want our feet to be together, or hip distance apart, and we want the second toes to be facing forward. That way we keep a quite neutral pelvis while being able to access our pelvis and we're able to lift up to the pelvic floor muscles. You want to relax your shoulders back, your shoulder blades down the back, and to reach up through the back of your scalp while relaxing the face. It's interesting that whenever we're working with hips, you might have the tendency of clinging onto your jaw and to squeeze there and to be stiff there. So I'll be reminding you to relax your jaw today so that you're actually relaxed through the hips. When we release, we relax, we let go of any stiffness, any holding pattern that, that we have consciously or unconsciously, then we can open up the hips safely and to a larger degree. Makes sense because if we're stiff up there, then our body is trying to keep us safe and it's holding onto the more narrow stance. Whereas if we relax, the body knows that it's safe and it can go to its full range of motion without any resistance. So relax your jaw. <laughs> keep reaching up through the back of your scalp and keep your face relaxed. We'll start with one ohm, so bring your arms to your heart center. Take a moment just to bow down for a second and to let go of anything that you're holding on to from the day, from the weeks that we've passed at home and even from our life before that. Come back to the feeling of your feet on the ground, to, to the feeling of your breath in your lungs. Reach up through the back of your scalp and inhale for home. Chanting peace. Bring your arms by your sides. Press down into the feet, big toe mouse, pinky toe mouse, and heels. Press down so that you feel a lift through the inner arches of the feet, a lift through the outer knees, and a lift through the perineum for the women from the cervix, lifting up. Mula Bandha, engaging that root lock. Then stomach lock, Udhyana Bandha, suck your lower belly in, lift it up. Keep your rib cage in and lift up the back, bottom ribs, keep the chest proud while pulling the shoulders back, pulling the shoulder blades together. Reach up through the back of the scalp, open the eyes if they're closed and focus at your nose tip or at a fixed point in front of you. Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, bring your arms by the sides and all the way up, reach up. And exhale, arms by the sides and dive forward. Keep your legs straight if it's possible. Inhale, pick up the chest. Maybe the fingers are on the ground, maybe on your feet, on your legs, and exhale, walk back. Knees, chest, and chin for the first warrior, for the first sun salutation. Inhale, slide forward, press tops of the feet down, push the chest forward, cobra, and exhale, push the hands down. Downward facing dog. High pressing down dog. 
spread your inner hands and your outer hands down and really extend your shoulders. Feel like you're stretching through the shoulder girdle. Widen the shoulder blades, send your hips back and pull your lower belly in and forward. Lengthen your lower belly. Keep reaching back to the heels and keep breathing. Ujjayi breath is an option for a long, steady, deep breath. Exhale here, stay in the pose. And then as you inhale, bend the knees, skins forward, walk or hop forward, half lift. And exhale, fold over the legs. Keep the legs straight if possible. Press the feet down and inhale, rise up, arms by the sides, reverse swan dive. And exhale, arms by your sides. One more time. Inhale, pick up the chest, the chin, reach the arms up, really reach the arms up. And exhale, dive forward. Dive, dive, dive. Inhale, half lift, keep your weight forward, the legs straight. And exhale, chaturanga. Press the hands down, bring the knees down if needed. Inhale, slide forward, press the feet down, push the chest forward. And exhale, push with the hands downward facing dog. Five breaths in down dog again. Keep pushing into the hands. Keep thinking of the pubic bone, reaching up towards the sky and the lower belly, sucking in and reaching forward towards the chest. Inhale deeply, keeping that engagement. And exhale, stretch the arms a bit more, stretch the legs a bit more, reach back through the heels. Inhale here. And exhale, stay in the pose. With your next inhale, bend the knees and walk forward or hop forward, half lift. And exhale, fall over the legs. Press the balls of the feet down, inhale, reverse swan dive, reach the arms up, gaze up, and exhale, arms by your sides. Surya Namaskara B. Inhale, chair pose, bend the knees, send your hips back, pick up the chest, and exhale, fall over the legs. Inhale, half lift, press the hands down, and exhale, chaturanga, walk or hop back, uh, low push up. Inhale, slide forward, press feet down, hands down, and exhale, push away, downward facing dog. Inhale, the right foot forward, turn the left heel in, press the feet down, and rise up. We'll take three breaths in this warrior. So press the outer feet down, press the front feet down and lower a bit down through the hips. Four, two, widen the shoulder blades. Make sure your lower belly is sucked in and keep reaching up through the arms. Four, one. Exhale, arms down, press the hands down, push, no sound as you bring the foot back, chaturanga. Inhale, forward, and exhale, push, downward facing up. Inhale, the left foot forward, Warrior one position, keep pressing the feet down and reach up through the arms, three breaths here. Press the outer back foot down, send the right hip forward, press the left foot down, suck the lower belly and reach up through the arms, four, two. And one, dive down, press the hands down, push, plank and chaturanga, maybe knees come down. Inhale, push to come forward, press the chest forward, and exhale, push back, downward facing dog. You're always welcome to come to child's pose or this variation we can go for dolphin. So you can bring the elbows down, push the chest back, wide on the shoulder blades, four, five. If your elbows are down, press inner hands and outer elbows down, Use the strength of the chest, four, four. And then from there, send your pubis back, send your heels back, four, three. Keep your lower belly in and forward, send the pubis back, four, two. And one more, inhale into the shoulder blades. And exhale, heels back, four, one. Straighten the arms, gaze forward. Inhale, upper hop, half lift, and exhale, fall over the legs. Inhale, Uttadasana, chair pose. And then exhale, come up. Good job. Okay, so, three pose. You want to find your right leg, and first open it up, 
so that the hip opens it to the side, and then bring the foot up. So option to keep the foot at any point to the inner leg, or to bring the foot up for um, half lotus. So as you saw, coming up for half lotus, I didn't go here and open. I opened up first, and then I brought my foot up. That way I protect my knee. Remember, if this is too much, bring the foot alongside the leg. If you want to go for more, you can wrap the right arm all the way around, you wrap the right foot, bring your left hand to the hip crease, inhale, pick up the chest, and you can stay here or fall forward for five breaths. So stay up or fall forward for four. Keep the weight at the front of the foot and keep the left leg straight. Four, three. Don't worry about the right knee going back. Just think of the hips being level. Four, two. Keep the lower belly in and use your bandas, the pelvic floor strength, and the ribs to come lower. Four, one. Inhale, pick up the chest if you're down. Exhale, stay here. Keep pressing the straight foot down. Then inhale, come up with control. Exhale, foot down with control. Left side. Again, first open up the hip and then stay wherever you need to be with the foot or go all the way up. Stay there or wrap the arm around. Stay there. Or exhale and fall. Ardha Bada Padmottanasana. Or five breaths. Wherever you are, keep thinking of the pelvis staying level. Keep the right leg pressing down. Four, four. Think of the right inner knee lifting up and keep pressing the ball of the right foot down. Four, three. Keep your right leg straight. Suck the lower belly in and towards the chest. Four, two. Relax the shoulder blades towards the sacrum and keep reaching away through the back of the crown. Four, one. If you're down, inhale half the way up first. Exhale, stay there. And then inhale, press the foot down with the strength of the right leg. Lift up, release the leg. Good job. Trikonasana, all the way on the left foot. Inhale the right foot back. There should be a three feet distance, so your own three feet in between your, leg, your feet. Your right foot can be, well, first you bring your feet parallel, and then you open up the right foot to the back, and your left foot can be parallel to the small side of the mat or slightly turned in. Pull the belly in, pick up the chest, open up the arms to a T, pull the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down. Press the feet down, feel the glutes engaging, and then hinge from the hips and wrap your shin or your big toe. Four, five. Keep your legs straight. If you need to be higher up, that's great. Four, four. Pull your shoulders back in space, your shoulder blades towards the sacrum. Relax the head or gaze up. Four, three. Keep your legs straight and reach away through straight arms. Four, two. And one, press down to the feet and lift up. Bring the foot in and open up the left foot. Suck the lower belly in, pick up through the chest, hold the banda engagement, and go for the other side of Trikonasana. Same variation, four, five. Keep pressing the feet down, activate your glutes, activate the front thigh, four, four. Keep your lower belly sucking in, Open up through the chest, four, three. Reach away through the arms, open heart, pull the shoulder blades back and the crown of the head forward, four, two. Focus and breathe, four, one. Press feet down and inhale, come up. Okay, bring the feet parallel again, and then turn the right foot to the back. Back foot again can stay parallel to the short side of the mat or to turn slightly in. Bring your arms to your back by internally rotating the shoulders. So you can go for reverse prayer with the arms or grab opposite shoulders. Press the feet down, inhale, pick up the chest. Purvotanasana, sorry, 
Hands with Tanasana, press the feet down, send your cubits back and fold the chest forward. Work back. Pay attention to what's happening with the hips. So keep pressing the feet down, keep the glutes active. Work forward. Now you really want to push the left hip forward and push the right inner thigh back. Work three. And then from that, push, pull the lower belly in and reach it forward. Four, two. If the palms are together, press them together, open up the chest, pull the shoulder blades towards the back. Four, one. Press the feet down and inhale, rise up. Turn to the other side. And exhale, fold other side. Four, five. Legs are straight and active. Press the feet down, suck the lower belly in, reach it forward, four, four. Keep pressing the feet down, keep the left inner thigh moving back and from there, suck the lower belly in and reach it forward, four, three. Keep pressing back, other foot down, activate the right glute, four, two. And pull the shoulder blades down the back, press the palms together if they're together or just hold onto the elbows, four, one. Press feet and inhale, come up gracefully. Turn again, brasadita, open feet, open legs, and then turn the right foot uh, to the back again. Revolve triangle. Hips are really scissoring together. So you feel that the right glute is moving back and the left glute is moving forward. Suck the lower belly, pick up the chest, inhale the arms up first, reach up. And then as you exhale, first find a twist through the body and then go down. You can grab onto the shin, go for the inside, or if you want the full variation, go for the outside of the right foot. Use the left hand to push the left shoulder forward and reach up through the right arm, gaze up, or five. Keep the legs scissoring together. So press the left heel down and squeeze your left glute forward, or four. Press the right heel down, keep the right leg straight and send the right inner thigh back. Four, three. Pull the lower belly in and forward, push forward to the chest. Four, two. And one, press feet down, pull the belly in and come up. Feet parallel and then turn the front foot to the front. Inhale the arms up, send the right hip forward, left inner thigh back and exhale, twist and then find your variation with the right hand down. Reach the left arm up, push the right shoulder forward, pull the left shoulder back, four, five. Keep the legs straight, press the right foot down, send the right glute forward, four, four. Press the left heel down, activate the left thigh, send the left inner thigh back, four, three. Activate your glutes, suck the lower belly in, pull it forward, four, two. And then pushing away through the arms, reach the chest to a vertical. Four, one, press the feet down and inhale, come back to center. Good job. Then I said, open up the feet wider. Press the other feet down. Suck the lower belly in and pick up the chest. Inhale here and then exhale, fold forward. Make sure your hips stay in the same line as the feet. Don't allow the hips to go back and then bring your hands in that same line too. As you inhale, make sure that you're very straight, opening up the chest, and then exhale, use your hands to pull your chest down, four, five. Press the outer feet down, and you can feel the sit bones moving towards the ground so that you lengthen the lower back, four, four. Really send your pubis up in space, and pull your lower belly in and down in space. Four, three. Keep the crown of the head moving down. Use your hand to help you go in between the legs. Four, two. And one, inhale, pick up the chest, halfway up. And exhale, press outer feet down. Pull the belly in, inhale, come up. Hands to hips. And exhale, open up the right foot, order to position. So in warrior two position, what's changed is that we're actually opening up the front thigh. So in warrior one, stay in warrior two. In warrior one, we were here and we were opening up through the back hip. 
in warrior two, we're facing the front and this change of the hips of the pelvis means that it's the front hip that's open. So feel how that's happening, press the feet down and open up the arms. Reach out away through the arms, pull the shoulders back, pull the shoulder blades down. Gaze towards the front fingertips, and as you exhale, you can fold a bit more so that the front knee comes to a right angle. One more inhale here. And exhale here. Good job. Inhale here. Udida Barba Konasana. Exhale. Right elbow on top of the knee. Hand to the inside of the foot or hand to the outside of the foot. In that order, uh, regarding how challenging it is. So use your hand to lightly have some balance there, but keep pressing the feet down and access your pelvis. Open up the chest, relax your head, reach away through the fingertips. Four, five. Four. Three, reaching our way through the fingertips and press down to the left outer foot. Four, two. And one. Bring your hands to the center. If you need to, if you know you can go all the way around and open up to this revolved Parsvakonasana, go for it. Otherwise, bring your back, back knee down. Push the left hip forward. Keep your toes tapped. And then come up, bring your hands to the chest. Twist with the chest. Keep the left hip moving forward and bring the elbow to the outside of the thigh. From there, open up the arms and you can stay here and breathe. Keep thinking of squaring the hips. If you want to go further, straight to the back leg. Four, five. Four. And then if you want more, bring the arm overhead. Four, three. Keep reaching out, way through the arm, feel the whole body twisting. Four, two. Scissor the hips, left glute is active. Four, one. Good job. Arm down. Come back to your warrior two. So press the feet down, feel the legs working, come up, and then come back to Prasarita and open up the left hip. Warrior two position. Four, five. Press the feet down, suck the lower belly in, reach up. Four, four. Activate your glutes. Feel how the front hip is now open. Four, three. Again, if it's too much, bringing the back foot in allows for the hip opening to be less intense. Four, two. And one. So same variation with the legs, just bring the arm to whichever variation you went before. Pull the left shoulder leg down the back and reach away through the fingertips. Four, five. Keep pressing the feet down, feel the glutes activating, reach up through the lower belly. Four, four. Keep breathing, use your muscular chart to support you. Four, three. Keep the legs active and keep pushing the chest forward, opening up the chest. Four, two. And one. Again, push the hip forward and you can go straight for the reverse variation. Or if it's too much, bring the back knee down. Untuck, well, keep the toes tucked throughout. Pull the belly in. Bring the hands to the chest, find the twist, and then bring the elbow down, bring the hand down, open up. You can stay here or you can straighten the leg. And you can stay here where you can bring the arm overhead. Five breaths. Four. Keep squeezing the right glute forward. Send the left inner thigh back. Four, three. Two. And one. Slowly come back to center. Warrior two position. And then open up. Come to your Prasarita. Hands to the hips. Inhale, pick up the chest and exhale, fold forward. Bring your hands to the ground 
Inhale, pick up the chest. And exhale, turn your hands around so that the fingers are pointing back. And start crawling with the hands back. Once you find your limit, start squatting down onto the arms. And then from here, you can sit all the way back or you can try to balance on the arms. So to balance on the arms, you have to straighten the legs, press in with the legs, point the feet, press down with the hands and find a point of balance and then slowly come down. So try it. And then we're here in Upa Vista Konasana. So when you come down, you want to flex the feet. You want to send the pubis back. You can keep thinking of grounding the sits bones down while sending the pubis back. And that way you think of a long lower back. Grab the outer feet. So if your legs are too wide open, you won't be able to grab the feet. So maybe close the feet a bit more and grab the outer feet. Use that grip to push forward into the hands and feel the quads working. So keeping that quad action, pull the belly in, pick up the chest, and then exhale, fall forward. Four, five. Keep grounding the six bones down, suck the lower belly in and lift it forward. Four, four. Pull the shoulder blades back in space and reach the crown of the head forward. Four, three. Keep the quads active. Keep breathing, four, two, and one. Inhale, pick up the chest, and exhale, come back. Use your hands to bring the knees in. Barakonasana, feet together, open up the knees, just using your muscle strength. So press the feet together, no hands, open up the knees. Maybe your knees are up there, that's fine. They're up there, that's fine. Keep thinking of grounding the sit bones, but think of the pubis moving back. This is called Svadhisthana Bandha. So pushing the pubis back in your forward folds will help you to engage Mula and Udiana will help you to go further forward. So once you find where your knees are, then bring your hands to the feet and use your hands to open up the feet like a group. Again, if that doesn't happen for you, stay with what you got. Pull the belly in, pick it up, pull the shoulders back, pull the shoulder blades down. Inhale, pick up the chest, and exhale, reach forward. Keep thinking of the pubis moving back. Maybe you'll stay up and breathe. Four, five. Maybe we'll go down. Four, four. Make sure you're not rounding the back. This is a straight back, Bhadakonasana. Four, three. Keep pressing the heels together, keep the chest open. Four, two. And one. Pull the belly in and come up. And use your hands to bring the knees in. Okay. Feet are one foot away from your pelvis, so around 30 centimeters. You, put, you bring your weight back to open up the chest. Just using your leg, try to bring the right shin on top of the left thigh and flex the right foot. Again, maybe you'll have to be all the way back for this. Maybe you already feel the hip working, maybe your knee is all the way back there. That's fine. Send your pubis back and think of your knee moving away from the hip. So in other words, maybe it's moving up rather than forward. So that's fine. Keep finding distance from the hip to the knee. Keep thinking of the hip coming into the pelvis. That's called Ketubanda, the hip lock. And keep thinking of the pubis moving back in space. Now, if you're comfortable, you bring the, foot, the left foot in and the chest closer to the shin. Keep the right foot working for a while. If you're comfortable, you walk the hands a bit further forward. Keep thinking of the pubis moving back, open the chest, four, four. If you don't feel anything with the hip, that's good, you're really open. Keep pushing the knee forward in that, in that um, scenario, four, three. Otherwise, don't overdo it with the knee moving forward. 
the knee will move forward when the heel is open. So don't stress the knee because then it's a lot of pressure on the knee. Four, two. You don't want to compensate for any hip inflexibility. Four, one. Good. Move back. We'll come back to this later. Switch legs. Start with the foot uh, 30 centimeters away and bring the left foot on top this time. Stay with the hands back. Think of the pubis moving back, the knee moving away from the pelvis. Pull the belly in and up. Four, five. And if you're comfortable, bring the foot closer in and move the hands closer to the hips. Pick up the chest. Four, four. Be patient. One side might be much different than the other. This is my stiff set. Four, three. So I just breathe into the hip. And I stay with that integrity. Four, two. And slowly move away. Good job. Bring the feet close together, but I can ask my feet. Open up the feet like a book. Pick up the chest. In this occasion, we'll round the back. So pull the shoulders back, bring the chain, segment the spine. Start by rounding the upper back, then the middle back, and then go to the lower back. And think of the crown of the head moving to the feet this time. Four, five. You can use the elbows to push down to the hips and pull away. Four, four. So that you feel that you're pressing the knees onto the ground. Again, don't force it because if your hips are not open, then the knees will take all the burden. Four, two. And one, pull the belly in and come up. Good job. Um, dear pose, bring the right shin parallel to the front of the mat, because you're probably facing that way. <laughs> and then the back shin parallel to the side of the mat. So make a swastik out with your legs, which is a sacred symbol that it's been uh, it's appropriated. So find that right angle, right angle, right angle with knees and hips. Inhale, pick up the chest. And exhale, you want to move towards the front shin, so towards the center of the shin. Keep the pelvis tilting back, the pubis moving back, and open up the chest. And breathe as you fold, four, five. Maybe you stay higher up. Remember, you are where you are. Just breathe. Four, four. Maybe you're all the way up. The left hip is not on the ground. It's normal. But keep the right hip grounded. Four, two. And one. Inhale, come up. Move back. No arms to switch. Turn to face the other leg. Find the two right angles with the knees. Find the right angle with your hips. Send the left thigh back in space, pull the belly in, the chest up, inhale, and exhale, fold over towards the shin. Four, five. Keep the feet flexed so that the legs are working. Four, four. Relax your jaw, relax your pelvis. Four, three. Two. And one. slowly come up. Come to your 12 fours. Tie the toes under, push back, downward facing dog. And then inhale the right leg up. Exhale, open up the hip. Imagine that you're in a triangle pose, both legs are straight. So keep your hip open with the legs straight and see if you can reach the back the uh, right toes back and up. From there, bend the right knee and open up the heel a bit more. Think of the heel moving towards the left hip. Push the hands down, keep your chest strong, wide at the shoulder blades, and keep opening the hips. From there, we will exhale and bring the knee, the right knee, to the nose. Come to a plank, 
and exhale, push the feet back and open up the hip, keep the legs straight. Exhale, the right knee outside the left arm, armpit, and then inhale, come back to center and open up the hip. And then exhale, bring the right knee all the way to the right wrist and place the knee down. Pigeon pose, move the left foot back. You can stay here and breathe. If your hips are quite open, then you can rest back and sit up. If you need some support, you can stay higher up, place a cushion under your right hip, or just use your hands and breathe. If you want to go deeper, then you turn your right shin further towards the front so that it goes towards parallel with the front of the mat. Keep the right foot flexed. But from here, you want to again move the weight equally distributed to both hips. So if you find it that you're falling on the right, then close the knee down in so that you find square hips again. Push the left hip forward, pull the right hip back. Lower belly in and up, kick out of the chest. Stay where you are or exhale and fall. You can stay high up, you can tap to your forearms or you can come all the way down. If you're lying on your forehead, then you can press the top of the back foot down, lift the left knee, push the left hip forward, and then place the left hip crease down, press the left joint down to pull the right hip forward, pull the lower belly in, and move a bit further to the front. Widen the shoulder blades and down to the hip. Four more breaths here. Stay where you are or go deeper. Three more breaths. Two more breaths. And one more breath. Use your fingertips if you need to come out of where you are. If you're already up, then bring your hands to the front of the mat. Tuck the back toes under. Push with the hands, come to a plank position. Exhale, Chaturanga Dadasana. Inhale, forward, upward facing dog, and exhale, push, downward facing dog. Wide on the shoulder blades, bring the left foot to the center. Pick up the right leg again, bend the knee and just draw circles with the knee. One way and then the other. Then place the right foot back, bring the left knee down, and push back with the right heel to release the right heel. Keep. Pull the belly in and reach forward. And exhale through the mouth. Other side. Downward facing dog. Inhale the left leg back and up. And exhale, open up the hip just like a triangle pose. So push into the hands, reach up and away through the left toes. Stay with the legs straight, inhale. And then exhale, bend the left knee. Left heel towards the right buttocks. Reach up through the left knee, down and in through the, sorry, through the, yeah, through the left heel. Press into the hands, keep the body strong. Widen the shoulder blades, inhale here. And then exhale, bring the knee to your forehead, plank position. Inhale, go back and open up the leg, straight legs. Exhale, bend the knee, knee towards the right armpit and outside. Inhale, go back, straight body, straight leg, open up the hip, and exhale, knee to the left armpit and down to the left wrist. Bring it down, walk back with the foot. Again, stay up if you need to, and breathe. You want to be on your edge, so if you're able to come all the way down, then make sure that your weight is equally distributed on the hips. From there, you can Fingers, you can finger walk your way back and stay here. And if you're not feeling it, if you want to go deeper, then shift some weight to the left to open up the angle with the front knee. 
towards right angle or full right angle. Flex the foot and then use your fingers to again distribute the weight equally on the hips. Go slowly. This hip might be more, uh, might need some more love. So be patient. Okay, if you want to fold forward, make sure that again you're sending your pubis back, sending hips into hip sockets, relax your jaw, and then fold with your banda strength, sacking the lower belly in and forward. Come to your forearms or all the way down. If you're all the way down, press your back toe down, lift the right knee, push the right hip forward. Press the right hip joint down, pull the lower belly even forward, chest forward and rest. Breathe deep into the left hip and exhale. Relax your jaw, relax your hip. Inhale and exhale. Pull the lower belly even and forward. Inhale. Exhale, send your right hip forward, squeeze the right glute. And exhale, pull the lower belly in and forward. For two. And one, slowly come back, pick up your chest. Good job. Bring your hands down, tuck the back toes. Walk the knee in if you want to push straight on the back leg and bring the foot back without any sound. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Bring the right foot to the center, pick up the left leg, bend the knee and form circles with the knee. And then the other way. And then take the left foot back, bring the right knee in, and push back with the left heel, pull the lower belly in, lengthen the left hip flexor, widen the short legs, relax the head. Inhale, push back with the heel, and exhale through the mouth. Good job. Bring your knees together and come to child's pose. Think of sending the pubis back and pulling the belly button forward, lengthen your lower back. And breathe into the hips. Good. Pull the belly in and come up. Bring your feet to the side and come to a seat. We'll go for what we did before. We'll check if something changed and maybe we'll go deeper. So start with the right shin on top of the left thigh, right ankle rather, on top of the left thigh. Bring the foot in and pick up the chest. So ideally you want the knee close to the chest, the left knee close to the chest and the right knee away. Flex both feet, pull the belly in and pick up the chest. So maybe, You'll stay here and breathe. You can go deeper. We'll work towards um, the twist. So you want to pull the foot a bit further away again. Keep the chest close to the shin and then bring your right arm in front of the right sole of the foot. Now, if you're all the way to the elbow, that's fine. But don't be on the forearm. So elbow is kind of fine. Ideally, you're going for shoulder. Pull the belly in and pick up the chest. Shoulders back and shoulder blades down. Keep pressing down to the left foot. And maybe see if you can ground both hips. Keep the right elbow, uh, knee moving away. Pull the lower belly in and pick up the chest. If this makes no sense to you, stay with the previous variation. Now, if you want to go for the arm balance, the grasshopper that we worked towards last time, 
Then remember it's a deep twist. So pull the belly in and pick up the chest. And then from there, you bring your hands to the ground and you bring the foot a bit towards the back, the left foot. But you want the right foot to be on top of the tricep or even on top of the shoulder. From here, press down with the left foot to come up to uh, the hands and then breathe here. If you can go deeper, then you chaturanga the arms and you bring the left leg up. Four or five. Maybe you're still here, keep breathing. Four, four. If you're looking for the balance, keep shifting forward, press the hands down. Four, three. Round the back, pull the shoulder blades down and start picking up the feet. Four, two. If you want to go even deeper, you press into the foot to bring the other leg back. Four, one. Okay, so try if you want to, or go for the other side. I remind you this is a deep twist and a deep hip opener and a deep arm balance. <laughs> so there's a lot of things happening. Left shin on top of the right thigh, bring the foot in, open up the chest and breathe. Four, five. Doesn't matter what happened on the other side. This is a different hip. Four, four. Keep your pubis moving back, open up the chest. Four, three. Keep the left foot flexed, the right foot flexed. Pull the belly in and up. Four, two. And one. Uh, stay or bring the foot away and twist. Keep the belly in, pick up the chest. Again, ideally, you want to go for shoulder against sole of the foot. Otherwise, stay with the tricep, but keep thinking of your whole body pulling belly in and rotating in an axis, a vertical axis. Three, four, five. So keep your hips grounded, keep your lower belly pulled in, and maybe moving towards your left, so that you open up through the chest towards the right. You can even gaze to the right. Four, three. Pull the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down. Four, two. Keep breathing into the hip. And one. Again, maybe you can go a bit deeper. Maybe stay where you are. So if you can, bring hands to the ground, push down, and lift the hips up. Four, five, round the back, gaze forward, maybe lift the feet. Four, four, think of moving forward, press the hands down, chaturanga. Four, three, leg straight, leg up. Four, two, and you can go all the way back, keep pressing the foot down, pushing the hands down, forward. Okay, good job. Come back to center and bring the legs down. Double pigeon. Flex the left foot and bring the right shin on top. Flex the right foot. Stay up and breathe. And then if you can, push the pubis back, flex the feet, shins parallel, and fall. Four. You're thinking of the pubis moving back. If you're up here, it's fine. Four, three, stay with it, breathe, four, two, and one, okay, last hip opener for the day. So from where you are, pick yourself back and up, back to what we were working with all this time. All right, so from here, again, you might stay here and breathe. It's a great exercise. Keep thinking of relaxing. So if you're ah, stiffening it up, it doesn't help. So relax the hip. If you can go deeper, then we'll go back to this variation. But this time, if you can go deeper, you press back with the shoulder against the, the foot to open up. Now the full, variation of this pose 
is with the shoulder pressing against the hand and the arm going back to grab the knee and you open up to the front. But in order to go to this variation, you have to be patient. So stay here for five. If you can go back, maybe stay here. Four, four. Keep the belly in and pick up the chest. Four, three. If you want to go all the way back, you always have to press foot into the armpit so that it doesn't go away. And you want to again relax the hips, relax the jaw. Four, two. Keep the belly in. And one. Very slowly, you move out just how you got into it. You bring the shins down, left shin on top. Send your cuties back, flex the feet. Inhale, pick up the chest. Maybe you stay back, or maybe you fall forward, double pigeon, four or five. Relax the jaw, relax the hip, four, four. So let the left hip rotate externally, four, three. Keep the pubis moving back, keep the hips moving into hips so it gets the knees forward, four, two. Pull the belly in and forward, the chest forward, the shoulder blades back, four, one. Pull the belly in and come up. Okay, last side. Stay here and breathe or come closer and breathe or bring the shoulder outside and breathe or push shoulder against foot, foot against shoulder and open up. Four or five. So stay where you are. Keep thinking of that rotation of the hip. Four, four. Pull the belly in, pick up the chest. Three. Two, go deeper. And one, keep breathing. Be careful when you're coming out. Very slowly, you come out using your breath. We're going back to Vadakonasana, lying back. So bring your feet together. Pull the belly in and lie back. Use your hands onto your hips, just as a, as a sign of support, a sign of love. So inhale and think that your palms are giving some love to your hips. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale. And exhale. And exhale, use your hands to bring the legs together. Feet close to the hips, exactly where the leg in and up. Press the feet down, use your glutes. Inhale, pick up the hips, bring chest to chin. And exhale, bring your body back down. Dynamic reach at the arms. Press feet down, inhale, hips up, arms up. Arms overhead, hands touch the ground when the hips come up to their full range. And exhale, hips come down, arms come back by your side. Hips and hands touch the ground at the end of the exhale. Inhale up. And exhale back. One more, inhale up. Long lower back, move the knees away. And exhale, come down. Good. Bring your knees to your chest, knees together, push the knees down with the hands and reach the hips away. Lengthen the lower back. Inhale into the lower back. Exhale through the mouth. Push the knees down. Push the lower back down. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Pull the lower back down. Push on the legs towards the lower back. Release. Option to have the feet apart, bring the knees together, release the arms by the sides. If you want to work a bit more with your hips in Shavasana, then you can bring the feet together and open up the knees. Feel free to form fists with the hands and place them at the right, uh, well, right next to your glutes so that your knees don't just 
collapse. Feel free to place cushions under the knees instead. This is just a practical way not to place something. We can then soften your fist, allow your hips to just open without collapsing. Relax your forehead, relax your jaw. Inhale one more time into the hips, into the pelvic floor, relax the pelvic floor. And exhale through the mouth, relax the whole body, let go. Keep work, just needs patience, consistency, a bit of luck so that you can do this work with open hips. But just bear in mind that if your hips are quite stiff, maybe that's for the best. You don't need to come to lotus pose or in your daily life. So if your hips are stiff, they're quite strong, they're quite sturdy and they're staying, keeping you out of trouble. So think of them as strong hips, but remember to show them some love with these flexibility exercises every once in a while. Now for the next few moments, lie here, relax and enjoy the fruit of the practice. Stay still, stay the witness of the experience. Relax and enjoy. Thank <laughs> you. 
You find a comfortable seat. Send your pubis back. Send your chest down. Take a moment to sit up tall in stillness and to notice how your hips are feeling now. Maybe they've had enough. Maybe they're open and happy. Just whatever it is, let it be. Bring your palms to the hips again. Inhale there. And exhale through the mouth. Feel the comfort, the release. Relax your arms. Inhale the arms up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Allow your head to bow down. Good job again today. Keep work is always interesting. So well done for going through with it. We're experimenting, we're trying new things, we're challenging yourself and for also being kind to yourself. The life in me honors and celebrates the life in you. Namaste.